guys welcome back now in this video we'll be looking at group cohesion right what is group cohesion all right now group cohesion can be defined as linking members of a social group together through bonding all right that's my definition of it right so let me get into it a little more so you can understand now human beings form groups naturally right but in order to succeed and to endure groups need to have cohesion right now let me get down more what um get down more into what cohesion is cohesion is the set of bonds right between like members of a group that keeps it together people are often drawn to like a group because it offers a close bonds and relationship possibilities but these sometimes require effort to maintain right now the following factors encourage group cohesion i'm going to get right into it so first up we're going to have requirements for group cohesion first up a common goal second leadership third authority fourth control fifth cooperation and six commitment and loyalty right so we're going to be looking at these in detail all right so moving on so first up a common goal what is that really now this can be viewed as members of a particular social group with similar interests working together to achieve a similar goal right now people are often drawn to a group if they you know see that it helps you know that it helps achieve a goal that is important to them right provided the goal remains valid and the members can see that the group is working to achieve that goal right no they will remain committed to the group as long as that is in place all right so that's common goal so moving on we're going to look at leadership next what is leadership right leadership is the ability to not only understand and to utilize your innate talents but to also effectively leverage the nationals the natural strength of your team to accomplish the mission right now all right a group needs a good leadership that formulates aims and objectives and organizes and coordinates the actions necessary to see you know those aims and objectives are achieved right the characteristics of a good leader are considered in further detail right so but we won't get into that right now but next we're going to look at authority authority this can be viewed as a power or a right to give orders or make decisions right no authority effective leadership um requires authority as we all know right this means that those in leadership positions have the right to make decisions on behalf of the group and to demand certain actions or behavior from the group's group members right now in a formal group a leader may um, emerge from among the members right in a more formal group a leader is either appointed or elected and you know the degree of authority they have will you know be set down in a document such as a constitution or something else right but regardless of the way in which um, a leader is given authority he or she must be able to exercise this authority not only to direct a group's action but also apply sanctions as necessary right so that's authority so moving on next we'll be looking at control what is control simple this is a power to direct or determine right now with control right now without control and um, coordination the group's effort to achieve you know its goal will not be as effective 
right? So it will not be as effective without control. Now, the actions and behavior of individual members also need to be controlled to maintain good relationships and to avoid any negative perceptions of the group from outside, right? Now, control is achieved through rules and regulations and through, you know, the leadership ensuring compliance with those rules, right? So, I hope you guys get what control means, right? Within a group especially. All right, so moving on to cooperation. What is that? Corporation is a process of groups of organisms working or acting together for a common or mutual benefit. All right. Now, a group will not last for long if its members pull in different directions, right? I think we should know that by now. It will not last for long if the members are pulling in different directions. Now, many groups from... You know, many groups form because the members understand that working in a group will be the most effective way of achieving a desired goal. And that cooperation, working together and pooling talents, skills and resources will bring about the, you know, greatest benefits to them, right? Now, a failure of cooperation um, can lead to a breakdown of relationships, right? The formation of um, faction and you know ultimately the demise of the group right so cooperation is very very important okay guys all right so moving on to commitment and loyalty okay commitment and loyalty it really is simple the state of um, the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause right right so members of a group usually have a sense of commitment and loyalty right now commitment is evident when people give off their time energy and resources and loyalty proceeds um produce um a sense of allegiance right members may feel less committed if they do not see the aim of the group or you know if they don't do not see the aim of the group being achieved in it at all or if they feel the group is poorly led or that there is a lack of control see how important control is now sometimes the values that you know the values that drew a person to a particular group at a particular time no longer apply to them that can sometimes be a problem now, when this happens, they can lose commitment and leave the group. All right, guys. I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, this is the end of my video. So, if, you, if it was helpful to you, you can like, subscribe. And, oh, thank you guys for subscribing. Uh, I really appreciate it. And... I hope you share my videos to others who are doing the same subject and would like the help as well. Alright guys, thanks much. Bye.